All right, kids. Um, sorry I'm not there today. I will be back uh, before the end of the day. So um, if you need anything, you can come and find me. Uh, today we're going to talk about factoring quadratic expressions. Um, the first thing I want you to know is um, what the standard form of a quadratic expression is. And it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is the number in front of x squared, and b is the number in front of x, and c is the constant all by itself. So if you look at this expression that is in example one, we've got um, nothing in front of x squared. We're going to imagine that's an imaginary one. We've got a 9 in front of x. That's the same as b. And a 20 all by itself. That's the same as c. So I'm going to write those down. a is 1. b is 9. c is 20. Um, so we want to make a little table like so. And on the left, we're going to put a times c. And on the right, we're going to put b. So for this case, a times c is 20. On the left, uh, right, b is 9. In this big empty space below a times c, we're going to write all the factors that we, the two number factors we can multiply together to get 20. So 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. On the right, under the b column, we're, hey, hey, sorry, the dog is getting in the Christmas present. Um, on the right, underneath B, you're going to add all those factors together. 1 plus 20 is 21. 2 plus 10 is 12. 4 plus 5 is 9. Yes, that's a 9, not an A. So well, the, the factors that we care about are the ones that add up to B. So in this case, it's 4 times 5. Now we're going to write this as a factored expression, which means we're going to put it in parentheses. We do this the same way every time. Two parentheses. Uh, variable goes in front. and back go our two factors. So plus 4 and plus 5. We did it. If we want to check and see if this is correct, we use the FOIL method to multiply it back out. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is plus 5x. 4 times x is plus 4x. 5 times 4 is plus 20. Combine like terms in the middle, and we get x squared plus 9x plus 20. Looks the same as that one. Hooray, we did it. Let's do it again. Now we've got d squared plus 11d plus 24. It means a is 1, that imaginary 1 in front of d squared. b is in front of 11, or in front of d, and that's 11. C is the constant all alone, and that's 24. Yes, it's a 4. Stop judging me. I can hear it from my couch. All right, we make our table A times C on the left, B on the right. A times C is 24 times 1. That's 24. B is 11. First, we're going to focus on the 24 part. We need all the two number factors that give us 24. So 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. And we add them up under the B column, 25, 14, 11, 10. We care about the ones that add up to B, and that's 3 times 8. Same idea as before, two parentheses, variable in front, each factor goes on the tail end. So d plus 3 times d plus 8. We want to check this. We use the FOIL method. d squared plus 8d plus 3d plus 24. Combine like terms. d squared plus 11d plus 24 matches what we did. Now, a few things I want you to know going forward. If you have a times c is positive and b is positive, like the two that we've done previously, both of your factors are going to be positive. If you have a times c is positive 
and b is negative, both of your factors will be negative because a negative times a negative gives you a positive, and a negative plus a negative is a negative. If you have a times c is negative, I don't know why I did that, a times c is negative, and b is anything, your signs will be opposite in the a times c column. Okay, so let's remember that going forward. Try another one. Now in this one, our b is a negative number. We've got a equals one, b is negative eight, and c is positive 12. This says confirm using a graphing calculator. Don't do that. Confirm using the FOIL method. Um, so, A times C, 12 times 1 is 12. B is negative 8. If you look right above, you should see that we're going to have two negative factors. So, negative 1, negative 12, negative 2, negative 6, negative 3 times negative 4. We add them up. Negative 13, negative 8, negative 7. We care about those two. So two parentheses, variable in front, factors that we found on the tail end. Let's multiply it back together and see if we did it correctly. And we can combine like terms. We did it, hot dog. Moving on down. This one is the exact same as we've been doing, except I just got a little tricky and rearranged the terms. If we put them this way, should look just look all the other ones. I want you to pause here and do this one on your own. Okay, we have A is one, B is negative 22, C is 21. A times C is positive 21. B is negative 22. So we have two negative factors is what we need. Negative one times negative 21 and negative three times negative seven. We add them up, we get negative 22 and negative 10. We care the most about the first one there. We get our two parentheses, variables in front, factors on the back. When we multiply it back out, m squared minus 21m minus m plus 21. Then we combine like terms, m squared minus 22m plus 21. Next one, keep, it, keep this party moving. We've got a is one, Try it again. A is 1, B is 2, C is negative 15. So A times C is negative 15 this time. B is 2. So that means our factors have to be opposite. So we have negative 1 and positive 15, negative 3 and 5, negative 5 and 3 negative 15 and one, we add them up. 14, two, negative two, negative 14. And like it says, we care about two. Same thing we've been doing, two parentheses, X's in front, factors on the back. Let's check our work. X squared plus five X minus three X, minus 15, combine like terms, and we did it. Go down, try this next one on your own, come back and check your work. All right, we should have A is one, B is negative seven, and C is negative 18. 
we can put it in our little table here. A times C is negative 18, and B is negative 7. A times A times C is negative. That means our factors are going to be opposite. So negative 1, 18. Negative 2, 9. Negative 3, 6. Negative 6, 3. Negative 9, 2 negative 18 and 1. You may have noticed that I start with 1 always. It's because I start at 1 and I work my way up through all the numbers until I get back to the, the original product that I'm trying to get to. That way I don't miss anything. Now I add them together. 17, 7, 3, negative 3, negative 7, negative 17. As it says up here, we care about negative 7 two parentheses, X in front, sorry about that, factors in the back. Let's check our work. X squared plus 2X minus 9X minus 18, and we combine like terms and get our original answer, product, expression, that's the word. Um, okay, now these may look a little frightening, but it's not anything different than what we've actually been doing. First thing we have to do is get it so that the, all of the information is on the left and zeros on the right. So let's subtract 27 from each side and get x squared plus 6x minus 27 is zero. Now we have a is one. B is 6, and C is negative 27. We put this on our table. A times C is negative 27. B is 6. We're going to have opposite signed factors. So negative 1 and 27, negative 3 and 9, negative 9 and 3, negative 27 and 1. Of course, if you know the factor before I get to it, or if you see it before I do, please don't write anything else down than more than you have to. We add these together, and 6 is the one we care about. So we have x and x, our factors on the end, and this is the only different part. It equals 0. Just like yesterday, when we factored different uh, expressions and equations and they were equal to zero, we had to set each of them equal to zero. Well, we're going to do the same thing today. Set each of the factors that we found equal to zero and then solve for x. So we have x equals 3 and negative 9. If we were to plug these back into the equation, each of these should give us 0 or 27. Please try the next one on your own. You can do it. All right. We need to rewrite this. So we subtract 70. Z squared minus 3Z minus 70 is 0. So we have A is 1. B is negative 3, and C is negative 70. Let's make our little table here. A times C is negative 70. C is negative 3. So our factors are going to be opposite signed. Let's get started. Negative 1 and 70. Negative 2 and 35. Um, negative 5 and... Um, 14, let's see, 6, no, they do 7 and 10, so negative 7 and 10, um, and then we go back the other direction, negative 10 and 7, negative 14 and 5, negative 35 and 2, negative 70 and 1, uh, so that's 69, 33, 9, 3, negative 3, negative 9, negative 33, negative 69. We care about negative 3, and that's negative 10, positive 7. So we have Z 
in the front of each parentheses, minus 10 plus 7, that product is equal to 0. Now we set each product, each factor, equal to 0 and get a value for z. z will equal 10 or negative 7. Very nice. Um, I hope you understood. I hope you got what you needed to. Let me know if I can help you at all. Good luck on your homework. Have a great day.